Hello and welcome to Fact Hunters. This is the third and penultimate video in our series of people who vanished without a trace. Today we're covering the disappearance of Lord Lucan. Richard John Bingham, 7th Earl of Lucan, was commonly known as Lord Lucan, an aristocrat who was born into a wealthy family and got into gambling whilst at Eton. He served his national service in the Coldstream Guards, mainly posted to Germany where he enjoyed playing poker. Lucan worked briefly at a bank, but gave up the job after being refused a promotion, saying, why should I work in a bank when I can earn a year's money in one single night at the poker tables? He traveled the United States, becoming known for expensive tastes, racing powerboats, and driving an Aston Martin. He also began to stack up gambling debts. He married Veronica Duncan in 1963, and they honeymooned in style in Europe, traveling on the Orient Express. Lucan's father gave him a marriage settlement, which was essentially an amount of money to allow his son to buy a family home and prepare for raising a family. Lucan paid off his gambling debts with the money and bought 46 Lower Belgrave Street in London's expensive Belgravia district. Lucan and his wife mixed in high society. He was offered a chance to audition for a James Bond film, although he turned it down. His wife suffered postnatal depression, which put pressure on their marriage, and in 1973, Lucan moved into a flat away from the family home. Veronica made an attempt at reconciliation, but Lucan was not interested. Instead, he decided he wanted custody of their three children. To this end, he employed people to spy on his wife in an attempt to discredit her mental well-being, meaning that he would be given custody of the children. Veronica began employing a series of nannies around this time, although none stayed in the job very long. One of them alleged that at this time, Veronica had told her that her husband had been violent towards her, on one occasion pushing her down the stairs. She had said that she was frightened of him and would not be surprised if he killed her one day. After a bitter court case, Veronica won custody of the children. This devastated Lucan, who increased his attempts to spy on his former wife. He employed a detective agency to run background checks on various nannies and would call the house sometimes, just not speaking, sometimes asking for people who weren't there. He recorded telephone conversations with Veronica, playing them to any friends who would listen, insisting that she was not fit to look after his children. Lucan's gambling began to run out of control. He wrote to friends and family asking for loans and ran lines of credit which sat unpaid for years. He began chain smoking and drinking heavily. Friends reported that he talked of murdering his wife and dumping her body in the Solent. In 1974, Veronica hired Sandra Rivet as a nanny. Sandra was in her late twenties at the time and had been caring for an elderly couple in the area before Veronica took her on. Sandra normally went out on Thursday evenings with her boyfriend. On Thursday the 7th of November 1974, however, she had changed her normal plans and was home with Veronica and the Lucan children. At 8.55 in the evening, she had put the children to bed and knocked on Veronica's door to ask if she would like a cup of tea. She made her way down to the kitchen. As she went through the kitchen door, she was hit on the head with a bandaged piece of lead pipe. Her assailant then repeatedly bludgeoned her around the head, killing her. Her body was then placed in a canvas bag. Meanwhile, Veronica was wondering what had delayed her nanny and called down to her from the top of the stairs. Suddenly, she was grabbed from behind. Screaming and struggling, her attacker told her to shut up. She claimed at this point to have recognized her husband's voice. She fought back, biting the intruder's fingers. He threw her face down on the carpet and she turned around, grabbing him by the balls. He let go of her, understandably, and gave up the fight, presumably in rather a lot of pain. Veronica asked him where the nanny was and he admitted that he'd killed her. Veronica convinced him that she would help him escape if only he would let her remain at the house for a few days to allow the injuries on her face to heal. As soon as his back was turned, she ran for the front door, escaping to the nearby pub where she raised the alarm. From this point onwards, the facts become distorted with multiple accounts of sightings and communications. In any case, Lucan left the house and at some point later in the evening, he called his elderly mother. He was distraught on the phone and told her of a terrible catastrophe. He said he'd been driving past his wife's house when, through the window, he'd seen her struggling with an intruder. He said he had gone inside and helped to fight the man off. Where the call was made from was never discovered. Police by this time had forced their way into the home and discovered the body of the nanny, Sandra Rivet. Lucan is known to have driven to Uckfield in East Sussex to visit the home of the Maxwell Scots, his family friends. From here, he wrote two letters to his brother-in-law, further claiming that he was the victim of circumstance, but the evidence against him was too strong and he was going into hiding. He left instructions for finances to be made available for the upkeep of his children. Lucan's car was discovered in New Haven on the south coast, not far from Uckfield, on the Sunday. 
In the back of the car were a bandaged piece of lead pipe and a full bottle of vodka. Blood stains matching those of Veronica and Sandra Rivet were also found. A partial search of the local countryside was made and the harbour in New Haven was dredged, but no evidence of Lucan was found. A warrant was issued for his arrest. A detailed and very publicised investigation convicted Lucan of the murder. Attempting to reconstruct the crime, the police found they could not see into the house through the window, as Lucan had claimed, and found that the supposed intruder could not have escaped through the front door as it was locked. There was also no explanation for the lead pipe found in Lucan's car. Sightings were reported in their hundreds in the following months and days. Police followed leads to France, Goa and Colombia, which all turned out to be false. Most of Lucan's friends stated that they thought he'd done the honourable thing and committed suicide, most likely jumping from a cross-channel ferry leaving New Haven. Sightings are still reported to this day, despite Lord Lucan being officially declared dead in 2016. His wife Veronica committed suicide in 2017, believing she had developed Parkinson's disease. So that's the end of this video. Lord Lucan's mystery is one of the most intriguing in the world. The fact that there is no proof either way whatsoever has made it open to all kinds of possibilities. So what did you think? Let us know in the comment section below. If you did like the video, then please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe so you catch the last in this four part series on missing persons. There we're gonna be exploring the tragic disappearance of Jason Jalowski and the work of Project Jason to help people that are missing in the United States. Thanks for watching.